Education, Chapter History and Prophecy. I will also make it a possession for the bitter and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the abysm of destruction, says the Lord of hosts. Jeremiah 51, verse 13, Isaiah 13, verse 19, chapter 14, verse 23. Every nation that has come upon the stage of action has been permitted to occupy its place on the earth, that it might be seen whether it would fulfill the purpose of the Watcher and the Holy One. Prophecy has traced the rise and fall of the world's great empires, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. With each of these, as with nations of less power, history repeated itself. Each had its period of test, each failed, its glory faded, its power departed, and its place was occupied by another. While the nations rejected God's principles, and in this rejection wrought to their own ruin, it was still manifest that the divine, overruling purpose was working through all their movements. This lesson is taught in a wonderful symbolic representation given to the prophet Ezekiel during his exile in the land of the Chaldeans. The vision was given at a time when Ezekiel was weighed down with sorrowful memories and troubled forebodings. The land of his fathers was desolate. Jerusalem was depopulated. The prophet himself was a stranger in a land where ambition and cruelty reigned supreme. As on every hand he beheld tyranny and wrong, his soul was distressed and he mourned day and night. But the symbols presented to him revealed a power above the earthly valid rulers, a power above that of earthly rulers. Upon the banks of the river Chabar, Ezekiel beheld a whirlwind seeming to come from the north, a great cloud and a fire unfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as a color of amber. A number of wheels, intersecting one another, were moved by four living beings. High above all these was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under the wings. Ezekiel 1 verse 4, 26 chapter 10 and verse 8. The wheels were so complicated in arrangement that at first sight they appeared to be in confusion, but they moved in perfect harmony. Heavenly beings, sustained and guided by the hand beneath the wings of the cherubim, were compelling these wheels above them upon the sapphire throne was the eternal one, and round about the throne a rainbow the emblem of divine mercy. As the wheel-like complications were under the guidance of the hand beneath the wings of the cherubim, so the complicated play of human events is under divine control. Amidst the strife and tumult of nations, he that sitteth above the cherubim still guides the affairs of the earth. The history of nations that one after another have occupied their allotted time and place, unconsciously witnessing the truth of which they themselves knew not the meaning speaks to us. To every nation and to every individual of today, God has assigned a place in His great plan. Today men and nations are being measured by the plummet in the hand of Him who makes no mistake. All are by their own choice deciding the destiny, and God is overruling all for the accomplishment of His purpose. The History which the great I Am has marked out in His Word, uniting link after link in the prophetic chain from eternity in the past to eternity in the future, tell us where we are today in the possession of all of the ages and what may be expected in the time to come. All that prophecy has foretold as coming to pass until the present time has been traced on the pages of history and we may be assured that all which is yet to come will be fulfilled in its order.
The final overthrow of all earthly dominions is plainly foretold in the word of truth, and the prophecy uttered when sentence from God was pronounced upon the last king of Israel is given the message. Thus says the Lord God, Remove the diadem and take off the crown. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it to him. Ezekiel 21 verse 26 and 27 The crown removed from Israel passed successively to the kingdoms of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. God says it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it to him. That time is at hand. Today, the signs of the times declare that we are standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. Everything in our world is in agitation. Before our eyes fulfilling the Savior's prophecy of the events to precede His coming, ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Matthew 24, verse 6 and 7. The present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living, rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes, have their attention fixed upon events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element, and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Angels are now restraining the winds of strife, that they may not blow until the world shall be warned of its coming doom. But a storm is gathering, ready to burst upon the earth, and when God shall bid his angels loose the winds, there will be such a scene of strife as no pen can picture. The Bible, and the Bible only, gives a correct view of these things. Here are revealed the great final scenes in the history of our world, events that are already are casting their shadows before, the sound of their approach causing the earth to tremble and men's hearts to fail them for fear. Behold, the Lord make the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turning it upside down, and scatters abroad the inhabitants thereof. They have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore has the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. The mirth of Tabret seeth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the heart seeth. Isaiah 24 verse 1 to 18 I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the earth, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down. Jeremiah 4 verse 19, 20, 23 to 26. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee, Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Isaiah 26 verse 20 Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Psalms 91 verse 9 and 10 The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down thereof. Out of Zion the perfection of beauty, God has shined. 
our God shall come and shall not keep silence. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people and the heavens shall declare his righteousness for God is judge himself. Psalms 50 verse 1 to 3, Psalms 54 to 6. This ends the reading in the book Education, History and Prophecy.